Welcome to part one of the pruning video series. Let's get started. Pruning your apple trees is one of the most important tasks on the orchard. Now pruning has a great impact on the size, color, and overall quality of your fruit at harvest. Now there's other key horticultural practices such as watering and nutrition, and those are still very important, but if the trees are not properly pruned, the quality of the fruit will be compromised. Now, like most jobs, there are certain tasks that have a much higher return on your investment than others. Now, a good worker should be able to identify what jobs have the highest value and then focus time and resources on those tasks. If you don't already know, proper pruning is indeed a high value task that produces solid returns year after year. So why bother pruning? Now, this may seem like a silly question, but it's an important question to ask there's actually six main reasons why we prune fruit trees. Number one is to reduce the crop load. Most apple trees are very precocious, meaning that they will naturally set a lot of fruit on the tree. If you let most apple trees crop naturally without reducing the crop load by pruning and thinning, the fruit size will be very small. The second point is to maintain the tree in its intended space. In an orchard, trees are often planted in tight spaces to maximize production. If you let your trees get too big for their intended space, they will most likely shade the trees beside and the color and quality may be subpar. Now number three is to allow light into the fruit and branches of the tree. Most red apple varieties need direct sunlight to properly mature and get the color that consumers like. Also, the branches of the trees actually need light as well for the buds to form for subsequent crop years. Number four is to stimulate new growth also called renewal pruning. The best producing fruit buds are often formed on apple wood that is from about three to five years old. After fruiting wood gets too old, size and quality will almost always be reduced. Now for this reason, it is extremely important that we encourage new branching that will generate new fruit buds for the future. Number five, in some cases, we prune to control vigor. In situations where trees may become too vigorous, it is actually sometimes beneficial to prune in the summertime when the trees are growing to reduce the energy of the trees. Number six, to remove dying and diseased wood. Over time, some parts of the tree may become infected with bacteria or fungi, and may even be hit with a piece of machinery. Now, like a human wound, it must be either properly disinfected or removed, otherwise the problem is likely to spread. The ultimate goal with pruning is to produce high quality, large fruit with a consistent quantity so that you can receive the maximum profit possible from your farm year after year. Before we start talking about pruning cuts, let's talk about some very basic tree terms. In most of these pruning videos, we will just be talking about very high density apple trees, which are also called super spindle apple plantings, since that is the most common type of planting today. The spacing is usually close to two feet by 10 feet. On this type of tree, there is usually just one leader or main trunk and some smaller lateral side branches. Almost none of the branches are permanent scaffold branches as is common with bigger trees. Now that you know some of the reasons why we should prune our apple trees properly and the basic structure of these trees, let's dive in. Let's go over the four main types of pruning cuts. They are tipping, heading, stubbing, and thinning cuts. Now all of these cuts will actually cause very different responses from the tree, so let's talk about it. The tipping cut is when you make a cut close to the end of a branch. When this happens, the response of the tree is to grow branches from the buds down the side of the branch you just cut. Now these new branches are usually fairly weak. Then there's the heading cut. That's when you make a cut approximately halfway down a particular branch. Now when this happens, the response of the tree is to grow new branches out of the side buds down the main branch you just cut. Now it's just like the tipping cut. However, the difference is the new branches that will grow will usually be quite strong and vigorous. Then there's the stubbing cut. Now the stubbing cut is when you make a cut that is approximately one to two inches or three to five centimeters from the adjacent branch. Now when this happens, the response of the tree is to usually send out strong branches or shoots to replace the limb or branch just cut. If there were potential for fruit spurs left on the stub, they will now usually turn vegetative, meaning that the buds will just grow out of the branch instead of possibly growing fruit. Then there's the thinning cut. 
The thinning cut is when you remove a branch altogether, leaving nothing left to grow. Now this cut is usually made when there are other options or branches nearby, or if you just want to reduce the crop load and create more space for light penetration. Now if you have a few very strong side branches and plenty of dormant buds, which are also called blindwood, above or below the strong side branches, it may be a good idea to flush cut the large side branches. This will often redirect the energy that would have gone into the side branches now into the dormant buds or blind areas. Now that we have talked about the main types of pruning cuts, let's briefly talk about what fruiting wood and buds look like. So first of all, borse wood. This is an extra thick part of the branch that is often almost round like a grape. Usually, there was fruit hanging from this location in past years, and often new buds will develop from this spot. Next is the spur. The spur is a short shoot that often grows mainly blossom buds. And then there's the spur system. Now this is a small area in which several, often older fruit spurs are located. Then there's auxiliary buds. You will find auxiliary buds behind most leaves on branches. Now often, they will lay dormant for periods of time until there has been a pruning cut or some other event to stimulate its growth into a new vegetative or fruit bud. Then there's the wood bud. A wood bud, which can also be called a vegetative bud, is often smaller than the fruiting bud. This will often eventually produce a branch. Then there's the flower bud, which can also be a fruiting bud. This is often larger than a wood bud or a vegetative bud and is usually more round in shape. Now a tip for determining if a bud is truly vegetative or fruit is to take a sample of the buds on the tree, cut them in half and look at them under a microscope. Now knowing approximate percentages of what buds are vegetative and what will be flowers for the next season can be very beneficial. Once you have a better understanding of flowers and vegetative buds, then you can be much more confident that you won't under or over prune your trees. The last definition is the dormant bud, which is sometimes hard to spot, but it will almost always push if the branch is cut or scored above the bud. So if you're looking for a new branching option, take a close look at the bark to see if you can spot some of these little gems. In the next episode, I will explain the water pressure theory and how to do a quick assessment of the vigor on the tree. Also, tips and tricks to remember what to cut and what the overall goal is to make our trees look great. Check it out.